Hey everybody, this is Jo and I'm here in my Houston, Texas garden. I'm in zone 9A and I am going to show you a sort of late March uh, look at the garden. I'm starting on climbing iceberg. Um, I can't get closer to it to show you how beautiful it really is, but it just puts on quite a beautiful show in the spring and this is the rattiest one in the world. I can definitely recommend uh, climbing iceberg. Oh, and you can hear, I think that's a uh, woodpecker in the background, but um, it, I highly recommend it as a rose. It's very pretty. And then my most exciting fun rose, well, I've got two next to each other right now. Of course, my fave, Mrs. B.R. Cant, looking really nice, and it was even better about a week ago on the fence here. And then, look at this. I planted this, this is Cecile Bruner, and I planted this last year and didn't get a single flower off of it. And look, oh my goodness, right? And it's got little buds all over it. And I'm so thrilled. I can see one that we need really open up. And they're smaller than I thought they were gonna be, but gosh, they smell lovely and they're just beautiful and I can't wait for that to hold all the top of that to be covered with pale pink roses. Now I'm gonna warn you, I'm gonna give you kind of a long tour today because I wanna show you so many fun things that are coming up. This is a Texas rock rose that's native to Texas and it's looking really pretty. And then I've just planted a few things. I've got um, some seeds that are little seedlings that were ready to get planted. So this is a gomfrina that I grew from seed. There's actually two in there. And that I think will be a really deep, deep red, almost maroon, which I think will be pretty up against that. So I'm not having all pale pink together. And then I decided this year, I've got my little pansies so far in the big pots and I decided that I've got so many gomfrina seedlings goodness gracious that I just tucked some in so that I put some hot pink and some pale pink in here so that when these uh, poop out maybe I'll have some pretty uh, gomfrina in here and then look at this beautiful this is a uh, gora that's native Texas I dug this up and put it in the ground and clearly a little chunk of it was left in the pot. And so it actually looks prettier than the stuff in the ground. And then here are all of my seedlings. And I've put several things in the ground like the little gomfrinas. Um, almost all of this, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six there. Those are all uh, milkweed, native milkweed. And I've got a couple uh, from here. If they came through, they had true leaves and big roots. I went ahead and planted them um, in a bigger pot and I'll show you that in a minute. And then I'm really kind of waiting. I did the gomfrina here and here. And then this is a scabiosa. Um, and I waited, it recommended that you not, not direct sow. And so um, I tried to, I took one out uh, one or two maybe, and um, it, the roots were so terrible, I decided to l leave those in a little longer. And then I've got, this is Jewels of Opar, and they're just barely getting started. And then I've got all this, you know, when you get excited and you buy seeds and you don't really have anywhere to put them. Well, this is uh, Spicy Globe Basil. I think all of this, all of these are spicy glow basil. I think that's a weed. None of my um, my pipe vine that I'm trying to grow, none of them have germinated yet. And we had a massive storm while I was out of town and it basically washed the dirt out of this. You know, they've got a hole in the bottom so I can pop them out with my pinky finger, but good grief. I mean, it was insane, but this is all, um, these are just uh, cantaloupe. And if I just get one, that's plenty. And then the thing I'm excited, this is a different kind of basil. And then I'm excited about the purple millet. It, this is every one of them germinated. They didn't, we didn't get very many in a seed packet, but 
uh, I'm super excited about that. Um, I thought they would start out with purple leaves, but they're starting out with green, so I'm hoping it, I'm really growing it for the purple. More gumfrina seedlings that I tucked in there. And then, oh my goodness, you guys, look at this incredible cone flower. Isn't it just amazing? I don't know why they're not all like that, but I'm not gonna complain too much because, wow. And you can see how big that flower is. Goodness gracious, who's up there? Some noisy bird. Oh, here's the fun thing back here. This is that Ami called Dara that I planted last year. It survived the summer completely covered up. And look at that, isn't that amazing? So, so pretty. And it's pretty just like this, but then when it gets uh, matures, it starts to go purple. And I'm crazy about that. I'm really, really thrilled with that. I planted more of that this year. I don't, I don't know, you know, I planted so much Ami, I won't know until it blooms which one has come up. This is Excellence von Schubert, and it's getting ready to bloom. It's kind of behind everybody else, but it's looking good. And then this is um, Gamma Delta Sweetheart or something right here, this rose. And I have not really gotten very many roses off of that. It, this is the best it's ever looked. It kind of got overtaken. That is Amy, um, no. That's uh, Salvia Amanti there, and it kind of overtook this a little bit. So that's looking better. And I've got carrots, nice and green. I've got some more uh, little cone flowers, and that's what this stuff is. And then I've got, I put in, I'll put in a bunch of little seedlings. So I've got some, um, Cosmos. I've had a couple of Cosmos kind of do this to me, and I don't know why. Um, I don't know what that's about. My um, Duranta is coming back. I've got some nice, uh, this is a um, Salvia, I think that's Coral Nymph. And then, oh my goodness, I've got so many little things coming up, which is why I'm going to make you look at my whole garden. And of course, I've lost track of things. I think that that is maybe a scabiosa and it might be a bachelor button seedling here. And then this is a um, larkspur seedling. And I think this is a verbena bonariensis seedling. I know that this, which I just moved from the gravel, is a um, hyssop, anise hyssop uh, seedling because it smells like licorice. I think this is bon Verbena bonariensis again. Um, that is that huge Gora that, uh, sorry, the huge Gomfrina that lasted through the winter. I think I just threw some leaves on it. I think I maybe didn't even do that. I think I assumed it was gonna die in the freeze and it didn't. Now here is the rose I never did really, uh, <laughs> I really didn't. <laughs> Do anything too that I should have. You can see this giant chunk of dead wood in there. I really didn't get in here in a timely manner. And so it's going to bloom. And once it's through with its big flush, I'll come in and, and pull that uh, dead wood out. But um, I kind of trimmed it back early um, in the fall. And uh, so, yeah, it has not been well taken care of. More little seedlings of different things. I'm so excited about all these little seedlings. These things, oh my goodness, you guys. This is called Rattlesnake Master, and it's gonna have, it's native to Texas, it's gonna have funky, funky uh, flowers. I can't wait to see what that's gonna be. I tucked some Cosmos in here. That's another uh, salvia uh, that I think will be um, coral nymph, but it might, I had some that ended up being white. Um, again, I, you know, I had such trouble over the years getting any verbena bonariensis to bloom, and I feel like, or to even germinate, germinate, and I feel like it's everywhere now, which makes me really happy. I just felt a raindrop, so it's possible this will be a shorter video <laughs> than I meant for it to be. Okay, all of this 
is Peter's Purple Monarda. And so that will get to be another foot taller, I think, and have hot pink uh, flowers. And then this is an Ami that will have white flowers on it, I think. I've got beautiful, look at this huge, um, that is, oh, I'm trying not to step here. This is um, parsley. And you can see how it's getting ready to go to go to see, or go to bolt, it's going to bloom. And that will have yellow flowers. And then this, these are the carrots that I planted and they will have white flowers. And there's Miss Stoutfire. What you doing there, girly? What you doing? Now I have got um, this. I thought I had put only uh, the native um, salvia farinacea, but this looks like salvia mist expires, so it's very possible that I got mixed up. So we'll find out what that is. That little clump right there is the um, Tutti Frutti Agastache, which I love and I can't believe made it through the, through the heat and the drought and the cold. Oh, now, before I go too far, let me go around here. This is, I've got um, prepared for, to grow on this, is a uh, purple hyacinth bean, bean vine. And they all came up during this giant rain. And then I've got a uh, Cleome right smack in the middle. And then this, uh, that may be Verbena bonariensis. This is a native verbena that I'm hoping will kind of come up and be like it, but it's not looking well. It looks like it's got some kind of, I don't know, weirdness on it, but it's not looking good. And then there was something else I was gonna show you. Oh, there's another um, Cleom, it's getting really big. And then I popped in some um, right in here. Those are more tall, purple, or sort of maroon. Um, cosmos. And so I think that'll be, you know, I'm trying to add maroon in. Got a bunch of, a ton of Cleome coming up in here. And I bought several different colors. And then I'm not sure what that is. That might be, that's something, isn't it? <laughs> it's not a Texas weed in my yard. That might be um, more Amy. I'm not sure what that is. Again, this is the, this is the, and you see I've got a big hole in it. We had a massive storm and knocked, it, it broke half of our tree in the front yard up. This is a Monte salvia and that would be pink. And then here again, I've sprinkled in, I've got carrots here and then I've just sprinkled in like one, um, or I guess that's two Cosmos and um, just for a little something to peek up at you from afar. And then all this came up in the, in the rain. Uh, I, that is more of the purple hyacinth bean vine. And it bloomed last year all, all summer. Um, and then these are just little self starters in here, little, uh, little, um, volunteers back here of Cosmos from a year or two ago. And then all kinds of stuff. I threw out so many seeds and I've lost track of what I threw out and what it's gonna be and where I put it. And so <laughs> there are little seeds out here. And I just dug that, uh, that's an Amy I just dug out of the gravel. I kind of spent a while uh, today digging things out of the gravel and putting it in the actual flower bed. This is a beautiful pink gomfrina. This is the pale pink that did fine in this pot unprotected. I think I put leaves on it uh, during the freeze and I put a, a sort of carmine uh, maroon one in there, my little seedling. And then here are, let's see, this one, this is the salvia madrensis that I just bought. It's yellow and it should get really big. And then I can see this is a Cleom. I bet you there's a hundred Cleom seedlings in here. And then of course this beautiful gray green is uh, Salvia leucantha. It's just starting to bloom. Mine usually blooms in the, in the fall, but not so much in the spring. So I'm really pleased that I'll get some, at least a few flowers off of that. 
my super tall um, penta is coming back. It's not tall yet, but it's coming back. And then look, you can see what that storm did. It just flattened this whole uh, Amistad salvia. So what I did was I cut off um, some of them like this and left a leaf or two but I went ahead and cut it to try to maybe get a bushy couple of pieces in here to fill this hole um, because everything is tall and goofy like that. So I'm trying to trim to fill the hole up. Now I have, uh, this is my Texas red bud. It's finally coming out and I got, they're already dried up. I got s like seven flowers. <laughs> it was pitiful, but last year, I got no flowers and it's looking like maybe I'll get a few more little flowers there, some little buds. So I'm excited about that. It's better than nothing. This is a native Texas plant. This is called a salt marsh mallow. And um, it has a really pretty sort of hibiscus-y looking, just a small pink flower, but sort of looks like a hibiscus. And then this, I need to get some uh, this is so yellowed. I need to get some iron on this, but this is Thunbergia. It's blue. By the time it got really going last year, it froze. I really got very few flowers, but I've got it coming up along the, the uh, garage. And then my little fire spike, it sort of starts out this way a lot of years where it's kind of I don't know, wrinkly, but it seems to sort of turn out fine. So I don't get, I don't get too wrapped up in it. This is that blue salvia eulogenosa. And you can see I've, I've, I've pinched it. See where I've pinched it? So that I'm getting two branches instead of just the one. So that'll double my flowers. And that's all in here, and it's blue, and it grows in the shade. It's lovely. It's one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite salvias. Oh, look, here's one I can show you in, in bloom. The first flower. Look at that color. Isn't that amazing? I mean, it's just fantastic. It will wander around a little bit. Sometimes you have to dig it up and move it back, but it's still worth growing. This light green which I've also pin just pinched back today, um, is a blue mist flower, and that's a native Texas. It doesn't bloom as much as I wish, but again, this is shade. This is part shade. So um, I have some in the front that, uh, in the front yard, it's got full sun, and it, and it really blooms well. This is just, it's coming back um, from the ground, um, and it's just starting to bloom. This is, um, what's, what's this called? diamond frost, euphorbia diamond frost. It's just getting its little flowers on it. And then this is another native Gulf Coast penstemon. I waxed poetic about it last year and, uh, and it stands. It's still amazing. And uh, it bloomed most of the year. And it has self-sown. You can see these little babies. I dug these up out of the gravel um, and put them in here today. And I kind of like it mixed in together with this blue, except the blue uh, salvia eulogenosa is a bit of a bully. And so um, I need to kind of keep pulling it out so that it doesn't just overtake the, um, the penstemon. Here's more of that euphorbia. This is the thing I was showing you over there that has a kind of a, a weird white fur on it. Like, oh, I can see it's kind of starting on this. This is a native verbena that I'm hoping will kind of look like verbena bonariensis. Um, it's called, I think, Gulf Vervain. Um, and I don't know why this one looks so terrific and those are being so weird. Uh, but hopefully one of them will look good. I just chucked seeds. This is um, Cleome. Again, look how many <laughs> seeds. I probably need to, you know, sort of thin this out. And then I did throw some um, fennel seeds out here. I just, fennel seeds came in a one billion per package. So I just flung them out because I know that the butterflies, um, the Gulf, uh, sorry, the um, 
uh, eastern black swallowtail butterflies. We'll need that, so I just grow as much as I can. This is that little knotweed. It's very invasive. I think it's from China. I would never have grown it. It's adorable. I would never have put it in if I knew how invasive it was. So look how cute it is. Don't buy this. Don't plant it. I've been pulling it up. Every day I find more to pull up. So do not, do not buy that. It is adorable. Don't buy it. Big old carrots coming up. Okay, you guys, these roses, my roses are so beautiful. This is um, Rockwall Sesquicentennial. Rockwall is a Texas town. And um, I had one die, but look how last year, look how good these two look this year. Um, they have been finicky and they're either gorgeous or half dead. So <laughs> I mean, the jury is out. I think they're pretty enough. I've replaced one. I don't know if I would buy it, I'd replace it again. Um, this is a native Texas, um, uh, skull cap, and I don't remember. I have one little batch of pink and one little batch of purple, and I can't remember which is which. But these are new uh, as of the fall. There's that uh, parsley I've shown you just a second ago from the other side. This is um, Clotilde Super. Look at that palest pink, almost white, barely peachy. Oh. And it's got so many buds. They're acting like they're not gonna open well. See how terrible it looks like? I can't, see, I can't find any thrips on them, but then it has opened. And so I'm kind of leaving it alone. Here is the first um, coral nymph salvia to come up and bloom this year. I have it everywhere. Um, it, it is just, it's come up, it's almost invasive. Um, and I'm just, I'm just weeding out, thinning out. You can see there's some there and there and there and there. And so, uh, yeah, I'm just judicious uh, thinning of what I, where I don't want it, but that's what it is, it's so beautiful. And then of course, I'm really only growing uh, profusion zinnias and they had them on sale. So I bought some and the slugs and snails ate all of the profusion zinnia seeds that came up. They ate every little baby plant. This is a, one of my other top favorites. This is Souvenir de la Malmaison. And it is in the summer, I mean in the spring, it is spectacular. So, so beautiful. And has a lovely scent. Um, but, and this will show you how, how hard it rained. This one is covered with mud. It hung all the way down. It just got beaten to death. Um, but this one is very susceptible to thrips and black spot. So I grow it, um, but I don't know that I can really recommend it. It's, it's so beautiful. Here's 290 pink buttons, which I love. So sweet. And lots of blue bonnets. I'm loving the blue bonnets all along the edges here. And then this is Souvenir de Saint Anne. And it's a single. And uh, it has a very faint scent. These don't last very long on the, on the bush. The, uh, the flower itself does not last that long. I've got some great... Um, day lilies. I've lost the tag. I don't know which ones those are. Maybe I, underneath all of that, those leaves, I will find, maybe I'll find the tag. Okay, here's the big look. Look at the blue bonnet, you guys. Isn't that just bananas? And they were prettier before that giant storm. It kind of knocked them down. But wow, I mean, this is what's cracking me up, is that my walkway now has actually technically closed over <laughs> because it's so full of blue bonnets. Let me, let me think of how I can show you the whole thing. I've got uh, 
these, they've never looked good again. They're sort of bouncing back a little. This is, these three grasses are um, Gulf Coast pink Gulf Muley grass. And um, they were gorgeous. I trimmed them down last year and they've never bounced back. And Mrs. Doubtfire likes to sleep on that one. And so um, hopefully this spring they'll kind of rebound a little bit. This white, these little white flowers, I've got, um, that is a Salvia gregii, um, which is a native Texas sage. It comes in several different colors and I like it, but it's finicky. And just when I was about to tear it out last year, then it looked pretty again. So isn't that just the way with, uh, <laughs> isn't that just the way with gardening? I put some of those tall um, Cosmos in here. I'm trying a new variety. Um, and so uh, one of them is called like Double Click Maroon, I wanna say. And then I've got some from last year that are uh, Rubenza, which I like. They're the ones that are perfect on the first day and about day and a half in, two days in, they start to fade into a weird color. Um, and so I've got some of each, really just kind of seeing which one I like better. These are, um, gosh, what's that called? A something aster. See, it's a terror. I'm not doing a very good job on my video today. <laughs> This is a Stokes Aster, and I can't wait to see it bloom. That's a native Texas. And then this is just a little, it's called, the tag just says, Bicolor Sage. And I do have some coming back from last year. And this is what I bought. I just bought this this year, this spring. And I, it's such an electric blue. I can't even, I can't even get over that color. I love it. And then here's the other thing. Don't, don't put it in your flower bed. Put it in, in your, uh, in your field, but not your flower bed. That is a um, evening primrose, and I, you know I've been t I've been pulling it out. I've probably spent in this garden this spring. I've probably spent two hours just pulling it out. <laughs> so don't plant that in your garden. And then let me see. Oh, let me go all the way around. I want to show you. This is an amazing rose. I love this rose. It's called Nearly Wild, and it is just always good looking. Now it did lose its leaves. It was sort of weird. It lost all its leaves in the winter, which it didn't do the year before, but it's clearly all come back and um, leafed out beautifully. And these petals do stay. I think I've said that in previous uh, uh, videos. These petals, like that particular flower, will just stay on this, this plant for weeks. And um, versus this beautiful pale pink, that that flower will be gone in three days. So uh, it's such a long bloomer. I really, really love it. And I've got some little, uh, tons of seeds. Again, I threw so many seeds in here. And so I have things coming up like this. Like I threw scabiosa seeds, but also um, bachelor button seeds. And I can't quite remember which one is which. I think that's what that is. I think that's another one. I think that's something I've threw in here. Um, and it's all kinds of little, little business coming up in there. So I'm trying not to step back there. And the Gora that I put in here, which is a native plant, really is finally kind of taking off. I hope that'll be super pretty. And then all around the edge of the fountain is um, yet another salvia called salvia black and blue. I love it. It's beautiful. It spreads, it's a bully. Put it in a pot is my recommendation. I would not put it in the ground if I was gonna do this again, as I spend a lot of time over the years because it wants to just get, it would take over everything. It would take over the whole garden if I let it. And so I love it, it's fantastic. Put it where you can contain it, a small bed with, you know, like, <laughs> with cement around the edges. I have some in the front yard in a pot and it does fine in a pot. Um, so gorgeous. Hear me when I say, don't put that in your garden either. Okay. This is the, apparently this is the warning. This is the, uh, the warning video. Don't plant this beautiful blue bonnets. This is the Blackfoot Daisy. This is native Texas. Um, I'm hoping I haven't done well with it in previous years. I'm hoping that that will, um, 
will continue and make it through the summer. And then this is blue-eyed grass, another native Texas plant. Isn't it sweet? It opens in the afternoon. I think that this is a little tiny version of um, of uh, sort of bishops or uh, Queen Anne's lace, and I'm not sure. I planted seeds, and I'm not sure where. Um, and then I've got some really pretty uh, day lilies just leafing out so nicely. And then this is all native milkweed that I grew myself. I'm so proud and excited. And um, I keep seeing, you see the little holes, and I keep seeing little baby uh, caterpillars, monarch caterpillars, and then the next day they're gone. And so, oh, wait, 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 wait. Is that one there? Maybe. That little thing right there might be a baby caterpillar. I can't quite see. But I kind of think my lizards are, are finding the babies. And then this is what came back. This is a another native milkweed. This is called aquatic milkweed. And this one, I'd have to find the tag. Um, but it's also native. I had one little chunk from mine last year, and then I bought some more. The Nepeta uh, cat mint, is that right? Uh, has come out so pretty, and I've got it under here because I have a kitty that loves to lay down in it, one of our neighbor kitties. And then this little patch is uh, fennel up here, and this is um, parsley down here, Excuse me, and that will all be for um, Eastern Black Swallowtail butterflies. So this is sort of my monarch area, and then this is the Swallowtail area. And then I've got, this is a different variety. This is Pow Wow Wild Berry um, Coneflower. And um, it, it's what I have in the front yard, and I highly recommend it. It's small. Um, and it blooms all the time. It's, I'm very, very impressed and would uh, recommend Pow Wow Wild Berry. Oh, can you hear? Oh, that is our woodpecker. He's very noisy. I love him. And then this is that little native uh, Texas salvia, I think. But uh, I don't remember what it's called. And I've lost the tag. <laughs> so, but it was really pretty. I uh, bought it as spur of the moment. And we're back where I started with that gorgeous thing. Now here's where it's gonna get long, this video, because I'm gonna show you the other side of the garden now. So the succulent theater is surrounded by blue bonnets and I'm calling it a little bit of a pocket prairie. Next year I'll actually maybe do some wildflowers, some more wildflowers. Um, this, I'm kind of just letting things come up and, uh, and see what happens. Let the, the, uh, the bees have things. Um, and so even if it's just a weed, I'm kind of letting it come up and be my little prairie. And then let me go down here. This is just sort of ratty back here. But I've got some neat native plants I wanna show you. So this incredible thing here is a wax myrtle, and that is a native Texas plant. And this is the one, it's got tons and tons of berries. Look, I've still got a few on there um, that the birds will nibble on. And then this gorgeous thing is a coral berry, native to Texas, and it's still got some berries I can show you. Let's see, can you see that? Look how pretty. And I'm just so impressed. Oh. It's so, it is so pretty, y'all. I would, I would definitely recommend this, but it does wander. You can see it's already kind of wandered back and there's a little piece of it. I don't know if you can see it right there that wants to wander. Um, and so you need to be prepared for it to spread. This is an arrowwood viburnum native to Texas. Um, it should have white flowers and uh, purple berries, again for birds. This, I'm so thrilled. This is a um, coral honeysuckle, native to Texas, 
and it's already climbing. I haven't done anything but plant it in the middle and it's already climbing up my little support. So I'm so thrilled about that. And then I just found this, I think, I don't know, maybe they sure look different now, but I thought they were the same. One of these, I think, is a liar leaf sage, which is a native Texas uh, sage. It's blue and it grows in the shade. And so I kind of tucked it back here. And then again, this is sort of a, uh, I'm not quite sure, this looks carroty. I know I didn't put a carrot back here, but um, I think this is probably something that the swallowtail butterflies will eat. And then again, I just chucked extra fennel seeds out here. And then all of these tiny little babies, that is all um, just extra um, basil seeds. More arrowwood viburnum. These things look the same, but they're different. This is a native uh, grass that looks like bamboo, really. It is spreading, and it's spreading a lot more than I thought it was going to. It's seeded, really. Um, and this is called um, Inland Sea Oats, and it is a butterfly host, which is why I'm growing it. But you got to kind of, like I left all the beautiful seed heads, drooping seed heads during the winter. And they were spectacular. I didn't want to cut them off. They're such beautiful winter interest. And then every single seed germinated. <laughs> They're everywhere. And so, again, the warning video, apparently. Um, if you're going to grow this, it doesn't seem to, it's not spreading by runners, or at least not quickly. I think it was all seed. And so maybe if you're going to grow this and you have beautiful seed heads, cut the seed heads off and put them inside in a dried arrangement or something, or it really will sort of take over a bit. This is crocosmia, purple, uh, sort of orange crocosmia. So this is like coral and orange. <laughs> and there's, that's red. These are all the colors that are not in my big, big flower bed color scheme. And so they're sort of tucked around. More arrowwood. My red rose, this is um, uh, Martha Gonzalez, and it's a great rose. It's tough as nails. It um, will take tons of shade, um, and it's unkillable. It's a great little rose. And then of course, my rooster, I have planted little vines. Those are, um, more of the purple hyacinth bean vine and that will hopefully cover up the rooster that I don't love. And then this ridiculous. It's like, <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. Y'all give me some advice. This is a parsley hawthorn. It's native to Texas. It does have big thorns on it. I didn't think about that when I bought it. I just saw one blooming and I don't know if this will bloom this year. Gorgeous white flowers, it's just an incredible tree. It's a small tree. Um, and I think it looks really beautiful, except I don't really know exactly what uh, Dr. Seuss was planning with this tree, but um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what's happened. So if you, have any, if you have any advice for me about what to do with this tree, do please share. More coral berry, and, and it does, it seems to be doing well. It, it kind of, this kind of got spider mite. And it seems like it's got spider mite again, but it is um, contained in a big pot and it seems happy enough, uh, minus the spider mite, but it seems perfectly happy to bloom and be pretty in a pot. So um, if you wanna grow it and you're worried about it spreading too much, you could put it in a, a big old pot and, a, and it seems quite happy in it. This is the native, um, what's this called? My brain's not working today. Um, nope, it's gone. It's a native plant, a native small tree. It is a butterfly host, and it is called... Nope, I can't think of it. Forgive me, my brain is not working. I have got tons of seedlings. It's all uh, Cleome down there, and then there's Coral Nymph Salvia in here. There's a lot of weeds in here. Um, I've got some... That's salvia, big blue, that I moved. Uh, it was sort of goofy in the middle of the flower bed, and so I moved it here. And, um, and so we'll see. It seems happy enough. I've got little blue stem, which is not happy here, but it is still alive. Little grass. And then this, oh, look, it's coming back. It's coming back. 
um, this is a indigo, wild indigo. And, um, and it gets really big. I haven't really had any luck having it bloom. Um, but it's coming back. It keeps coming back every year. Kidney wood. This is a Texas kidney wood. Okay. Now this, you guys, I, you know, I made a mistake. This is an elderberry. I can't remember if I told you about this in the last video. I bought it to grow for birds, but I didn't realize how it will spread. You can see it's spreading already and out of the bottom of the pot. And so I, it's too, it's gonna be too big. There's not enough room here. And so I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with it. If you're in Houston, come get it. I don't know. This is that fleece flower. It looks great. It's come back uh, after the freeze. I'm really pleased with how pretty it looks. Just a big puff ball, and I, I really love that. And it will have little white flowers. And then all this amaryllis has just, lo just looks beautiful, but I'm not seeing any flowers on it. I haven't seen any, any flower spikes. I have to admit, oh, there's one. I have to admit, I haven't really looked that hard. There's this flower spike right there. Hopefully this will be spectacular again this year um, with red and white um, amaryllis. And they're allowed in my color scheme because they only last like two weeks. And then, oh, this is a native uh, plant, a native uh, lance leaf coreopsis. And something eats it. I don't know what eats it. I'm happy, you know, I, I grow things for the environment, for the creatures. And so I'm not unhappy that something is eating this. I'm just curious as to what might eat it, but they're sure chomping on it. That's okay. And look how beautiful, such pretty, pretty flowers. And it went, and it was evergreen during the winter. Um, I was really impressed with that. Here's my other Mrs. B.R. Cant rose, which really bloomed, oh, 10 days ago. Um, and it's got a few left, but, um, but it bloomed much earlier than the other one across by the driveway. And then I've put in things like Cosmos. There's some Cleome seedlings. There's another um, Hyssop seedling I found in the gravel. There are um, some... Uh, Ami seedlings I've put up in there and so it's just kind of I'm just gonna kind of let it fight it out and I'm patiently awaiting my little larkspur to bloom I'm so thrilled I love larkspur more parsley and a little bit of larkspur and then this is gentle Hermione isn't that beautiful? Kind of a peachy pink with a little tiny haze of yellow. Absolutely beautiful. And this year, I'm not quite sure why, but the stock has looked kind of pitiful. And the one further back, I'll show you in a minute, is terrible. I'm ready to pull it out. Um, and last year, it was just one of the most wonderful things I had. And so I can't explain that one. I've got some uh, Cosmos I tucked in here. So, well, Cosmos seedlings. That's a Cleome seedling. Tons, tons and tons of Cleome seedlings. This is more of that um, orange, um, I'm, I see, I told you I've lost my mind. <laughs> this is more of that orange crocosmia. If you come get the elderberry, I will give you some of this because it's got, I have too much of it <laughs> and it's orange. Here's this rose that's looking, I think it's called Great Western and it's looking like it's pretty happy after we moved it. And the, um, let's see if I can get back here. This, I think died in the freeze. This is a um, porter weed, and my porter weeds in the front yard have come back just fine. Uh, leafed out, they look good. I don't know, I think maybe this died in the freeze. And then this is the dwarf um, Barbados cherry, which has come back quite nicely. And, and more um, amaryllis. And then this is a big, big uh, spider lily that will bloom in the summer. We're usually on vacation and I come home and there it is covered in flowers or it's covered in flowers and then I leave on vacation and don't get to see the rest of it. It's never convenient. 
old blush. Always amazing. And then this is a lot. The, now these are um, agapanthus that hate me. They never bloom. So don't get excited like I'm going to show you agapanthus because they're not going to bloom. They hate me. I put more of this um, Gulf Coast Penstemon in here. And it was the Dickens to get started and get it established back here. But I just don't want to be in focus for you. But once it finally got established, um, it's really, uh, it took hold and it looks good. And I found a few seedlings in the gravel. And so I've even added those in. So we do know that it will um, reseed um, and it was perennial. It looked great all it, it, the winter. It didn't even really die down that much. And this really nice blooming one down there, um, actually I showed up in a flower pot 10 feet from uh, where I have the rest of them planted. I don't know how it got there, but I was really happy uh, that it was just easy to easy to reseed. Um, the seeds I've gathered and tried to grow did not come back up. So it just seems to only want to seed where it wants. There's a big old Cleome seedling in there. Big bopper Cleomes. These are going to get five, six feet tall, so I don't really know what I'm going to do with them on my, uh, on my pathway. <laughs> Oh, here's an example. So that is the clump of, uh, of the grass I was telling you about. Um, and I have planted a little bit extra, but you can see there's a new clump there just from the seeds. And then there's some all the way over here. And so you, it will travel. So I would cut off um, any of those pretty... Um, pretty pretty seed heads you know I would hate to cut them off but um but that I think that's the only way to keep it from taking over your yard here is a little milkweed that I probably ought to dig up and put with other milkweed but it's been in the shade it grows in the shade all right um and so I may just add more here all the shrimp plant pale greens looking all right so many weeds like that's basically weeds. And there is a, a Cape Plumbago back in here as well. Just completely overtaken by weeds. And then look at this. This is a wine cup. I can't wait for it to bloom. That's a native Texas wildflower. And I've got lots of it along the edges here. This is a fall aster. It's a native Texas plant, but it kind of looks like, like it's gonna, is it gonna bloom? Is this not the same as this? I'm confused, because this is all supposed to be fall aster in here. More fall aster here, right? That is my lone obedient plant. All of my other obedient plant died last year. And then I think this is a pigeon berry. Oh, there's another obedient plant. I think this is a pigeon berry, which again is a native Texas plant and has berries that birds will eat. This is a little freesia. They have not bloomed, um, but little freesia bulbs. They have little white flowers and they're lovely. I hope they'll bloom this year. And then here is a volunteer borage. It's not blooming yet. It's prickly and makes me itch, um, but it's got such pretty flowers. And so it has it comes up here and there over in the yard. Um, over the years and so I just let it grow. Um, sometimes it will get so big it'll flop over other things and then I'll pull it out. Um, but it's one, it's a really beautiful blue flower. I've got a, a little wood fern that is native that looks so pretty out here and I really like it mixed together with the, um, the irises. Even if the irises don't bloom, which they don't really tend to bloom very much. Um, they, I think that is a really pretty little combination. Hello, my stout fire. What you doing, girly? Coming through. Now these are self-sown. They just go from year to year. This is a uh, four o'clocks, and it, they're just on the verge of blooming. And four o'clocks bloom in the afternoon. And uh, so all these sort of big clumpy things um, are mostly, uh, well, 
maybe 50% of them are, um, are those four clocks. And then this is a uh, different variety of shrimp plant than the one uh, behind me. And then this is a native, oh, it's kind of ratty, a native um, hydrangea called an oak leaf hydrangea. I hemmed and hawed over whether I should have cut this chunk off, but I did not. Um, but you can see it's already got a little bloom starting there. Now it's so, this is such a long video, but I'm like, at this point I'm in for a penny, in for a pound. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go keep going y'all. Thanks for sticking with me. If you're still here, um, you're crazy, but also thank you. <laughs> this is a uh, Walter's Viburnum. It has got lots of gorgeous new growth on it. It's native to Texas. It has uh, flowers sort of early, early spring, kind of in the really blooms through the winter. And it is uh, evergreen, fantastic. Um, this is taller in the front yard. It's much smaller. This is much um, spreading much more here. Um, but you could clip this and treat it like a boxwood. And I think it would be a great native choice instead of a boxwood. I've got... Um, little uh turk's cap coming up all dotted through here pink and then over here is red and then this is a coral berry here but this makes me wonder if oh i bet this is this is i remember i said it would wander so here's coral berry and there's a little bit i think that's what that is so super fun i'd be happy for it to to wander out here this covered in weeds of course is um it's all um this is a Rangoon creeper, all popping back finally from uh, from the winter. We had to cut it all the way down. It will cover this whole, it tends to go at the top, be top heavy, but it will cover that whole top of that. Um, and it will bloom on my neighbor's side because the sun comes in here. It never blooms on my side, it's too shady. And uh, this is from a friend of mine. It has, will have white flowers and darned if I could remember what it's called, I'll have to ask her. And then this amazing thing, I'm gonna show you from far away. Let me go back out. That is another wax myrtle. I limbed it up. Look how beautiful that looks. That makes me so happy. And it really gave me some winter interest because it was evergreen and I kind of trimmed it up a little bit more uh, about a month ago, but it gave us when all of this was still, you know, really not greening up, really not coming up, how wonderful that looked back in the corner. And uh, it's just, I love it so much. I'm so thrilled with it. I'll do a little pot video uh, another time, maybe this week while it's still uh, cool outside. The The weather out here has been amazing for the last couple of days. My American Beauty Berries, uh, my, my guys that helped me, uh, trimmed them back to the ground and I don't, they don't seem to have any signs of life and so I'm, I don't have a lot of hope that the American Beauty Berries came back. There's more four o'clocks in here. All of that's four o'clocks. And then this big old thing here is a, um, another oak leaf hydrangea. Also getting things started, ready to bloom. My little olive tree, I'm so excited. Look how good it looks. I'm pinching it and cutting it into a, uh, a little crooked topiary and uh, it just it just looks wonderful. I'm so excited. It's never looked this good. I've had this tree for years. Here are a few different pipe vines. This is one uh, pipe vine for pipe vine swallowtail butterflies and it is coming up. Oh my goodness you guys look at the little flower. See it looks like an old-timey pipe right? I don't know if you can quite see it, what it looks like, but how fun is that? I just love that. I have not seen this, this, this uh, bloom before. I've seen this. This is another pipe vine um, that I have seen bloom before, and I have, I bought a third one. 
because um, those pipe vine uh, swallowtail caterpillars will absolutely munch. They will munch it down. And I've got another one back there. I need to get a nice pot for that. And then on the wall is the wisteria. And then it came up, went through the ground, came up, and that was solid purple. Um, and of course I kind of missed it. I guess maybe there's a little bit on my last video. Well, if you are here 55 minutes later in this gigantic video, I really appreciate it. You were very kind to keep watching. Um, and I'm, I'm thrilled that you had that much interest. I know that there are certainly videos out there that I watch, YouTubers, that I would watch a long, long video as well. So I'm just glad uh, that if you're still around that you're enjoying it. Um, I hope you guys have a great week and um, that you're able to get out in your garden and do lots and lots of gardening and have lots and lots of fun. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.